next year, 2014. We'll see if that takes place. So what's going to happen is Judge Sherry Stevens will have everybody back in court July 18th, and we'll know more at that point. Speaking of the judge, let's listen to a little bit of what she had to say. Here, 2008 one State of Arizona versus Jody and Arias. This is the time set for status conference. Appearances for the record, please. Court Martinez on behalf of the state. And Kurt Norman and Jennifer Lumont on behalf of Ms. Arias. She was present in custody standing at the defense table. All right, the court has conferred with counsel and chambers with the defendant and victim representatives present. In light of information provided during that conference, the court is deferring ruling on the motion to continue resetting this matter to July 18th at 8.30 a.m., vacating the current trial date of July 18th. Is there anything else, counsel? No. Thank you. So you heard from Judge Sherry Stevens back in court July 18th. Jose Miguel, kind enough to stay with us, reporter KPHO. He was in that courtroom, even spoke to Jody Arias' mom, Sandra Arias. Help, help us clearly understand. So July 18th, that's when we'll find out what the next step is, Jose? That's exactly right, Mike. On July the 18th will be when the judge will decide whether or not they will allow a continuance in this case. We can tell you that the defense team has presented evidence such as a conflict of interest in the fact that they have vacations planned. They also have said that they needed more time to find people to speak on Jody Arias's behalf, and that's why they are looking for a continuance in this case. Now, we don't know exactly what was discussed behind those closed doors. That has been sealed, but we have heard those were some of the things that they were planning on presenting before the judge today the judge is now going to make a decision on july the 18th as to whether or not she will allow for that continuance and that was the day that the actual jury selection was supposed to begin for the penalty phase on this case so it'll be really interesting to see what the judge will decide i can tell you that sources within maricopa county have told me that the uh, judge as well as other county officials are not looking to delay this action any further they feel a lot of money has been spent already in this case and that it's time for it to be wrapped up got it did they did they speak at all, talking about the defense here, about friends like Patty or uh, Daryl Brewer who were su expected to testify on her behalf in the penalty phase but did not? Did they get into any specifics like that, Jose? They have not gotten into any specifics of that nature, but I can tell you that uh, there have been reports that both of those individuals are not choosing to speak on Jody's behalf any further. Uh, so I think that's where the defense is really having an issue here. They really need to uh, find people to speak on her behalf. Uh, if they don't get those people, it's likely that a new jury could possibly sentence her to death. So it'll be on Jody's behalf that they need someone to talk. Hey, any update on that front? When you talk about it, and you're right there in Phoenix, we're seeing her from the first time since the original jury could not decide life or death, and there she is in the prison stripes as she heads into court, still wondering what her ultimate fate will be, and we still do not know uh, when that final decision is going to be made. So there she is, Jody Arias, different look than when she was testifying, and in the midst of the trial, Jody Arias in the prison stripes. And again, this is what happened. A Judge Sherry Stevens set a date of July 18th, and that's when, you know, we thought that the process of picking a new jury would start. Instead, the defense wants a delay, and their, their date is uh, 2014, early part of next year. Jennifer Wilmot, one of the defense attorneys, has a full slate, five cases, so on and so forth. And we'll see how things go. Uh, the prosecutor, Juan Martinez, he wants things to start as soon as possible. But there she is. First look, Jody Aries in the prison stripes, and first look since the jury could not come to a unanimous decision on life or death. So that's still hanging in the balance as we see her. Different look there. Joining us, a man who helped us cover this riveting case, John Manuelian, great criminal defense attorney. John, just your thoughts here on, number one, seeing Jody Arias. Jody, Jody and mania isn't going on anymore. Right. And uh, for the prosecution, it's bad because the heat is still on, and uh, the prosecutor, Juan Martinez, wants to put the feet the fire underneath uh, Jody's foot some more. So this is a good thing for the defense. But again, uh, it all depends on the jury panel and who the jury is going to come in, whether they have preconceived notions, what effects did the media have on the case. These are all things that need to be deciphered before the next uh, phase at this point. Got it. Okay, and then we just saw 
Uh, more video, Jody smiling, laughing, and that's not, that's the norm for Jody Arias. I saw her in court myself. You did as well. You or viewers, John, yourself, watching her. She's very chatty, very involved in her defense, and we saw all kinds of emotions from Jody Arias, real or feigned. So we're hoping to talk to somebody who was in court to give us more detail, and, and when that takes place, we'll definitely pass it along to you. And as we look at more video of Jody Arias, we are all over this case. This Michael Jackson's daily life. It's coming to Don't miss it. Is back in court for the first time since the original jury could not come to unanimous decision. Life or death, Jody Arias donning the prison stripes. And uh, let's go to someone who was inside that courtroom, Jose Miguel from KPHO. Jose, uh, what more can you tell us about Jody Arias in court today? Well, it was very interesting to see her actually just walk into the room. This was one of the first times that we've seen her in a long time appear in court, not only dressed in her prison garb, the stripes, but she was also shackled at her hands and her feet. It actually kind of got a reaction from the entire courtroom because, again, we have seen Jody walking in in a very demure-looking way, looking almost as a librarian for most of the trial. So to see her walking in her prison garb was quite shocking. As far as the proceedings themselves, they were very uneventful. Her team, as well as Jody Aries herself, went back behind closed doors with the judge, and they discussed some things that have now been sealed. It was about a continuance in this case, the judge ruling that she will make a decision on that continuance on July the 18th, which was the day that the sentencing was supposed to begin. Got it. Jose, can you hang with us for just a little bit long? We'd like to get some more information. Jody Arias, there she is in court. More about her demeanor. We saw her laugh, and we'll ask Jose what that was all about. Uh, again, that is coming up. More on news here on HLN News Now. There's Jody Arias, our first look at Jody Arias. Since she was in court and she heard that there was no unanimous decision from the original jury of life or death, now we wait to find out if there's going to be another jury for a sentencing phase. And will a new jury decide that very question, life or death? Jose Miguel from KPHO was inside that courtroom. You know, we saw some footage, Jose, of her laughing. What was she like in court? Just her usual chatty, active self in there with her... For the most part, she kind of kept to herself a lot. She did walk in and she was smiling. She, was, she especially noticed her mother was sitting in the courtroom. I think she also noticed that there were some jurors that were also in the courtroom, jurors from her case. And uh, she was immediately escorted back into the judge's chambers after walking in. She was back there for a considerable amount of time. When she came back out, she was escorted back out and brought back in a few minutes later. And at that time, she was very much a, a very demure looking Jody Arias. Mm. So again, a lot of people really really shocked by the fact that when she was walking in, you could actually hear the clanks from the chains on, around her wrist and her ankles. Wow. Did you talk to her mom? And if so, what did uh, Sandra have to say? I did get a chance to speak to Sandra Arias right after the proceeding, and uh, it was very interesting to have a chance to talk with her. She told me that life had been very difficult for her since the trial, and especially since her daughter was convicted of first-degree murder. She did tell me that both she and her husband had received threats by phone from people, but as far as anyone in person, she said she did get a lot of stares, but for the most part in her hometown, she was treated quite well. Uh, she was treated with a lot of respect. A lot of people would not speak to her or they would just kind of nod in, a, in kind of an acknowledgement, if you will. But nobody within her hometown has treated her with any form of disrespect. She also says that she's received a lot of messages from people from all across the world. A lot of cards and notes have been sent to her home, all of them being positive. As far as any threatening uh, actions made against her, those have only been by phone. So some support, some threats, as you mentioned. Has she visited Jody Arias recently? From, from what we understand, she has not seen her daughter in a while. I could actually hear her uh, speaking with some of the uh, guards to see if there was a possibility for her to get a chance to meet with her before she was transported back to jail. We haven't heard whether or not she would be making a visit to the Australia jail, which is where Jody still remains housed until they figure out what her exact sentence will be. But uh, it, she also was a bit shocked by Jody's appearance today in court. And was there, did you notice any interaction, Jody making eye contact with her mom and any acknowledgement in that sense? 
just initially when she walked in, you could tell that she was pleased to at least see some familiar faces. It's really hard to tell whether or not she recognized those three jurors that were also in the crowd right away. But uh, you did see her looking like she normally did whenever she entered the courtroom. She would always kind of scan the room initially just to see who she was familiar with. She did so again today. So with the likelihood is, is that she did catch her mom's attention because mm -hmm. her mom was seated at an angle that she could see her the second that she walked in. Got it. Uh, as far as the Alexander family is concerned, only one aunt showed up. There were no siblings for the Alexander family. Intra okay, just one aunt. Uh, hey, we've got a call, Jose. Janet's with us in Kentucky. Janet, your uh, thoughts on seeing Jody Arias today in the prison stripes? Breaking news, we're getting our first look at Jody Arias. First look since the original jury could not come to a unanimous decision of life or death. Now, today was first part of next year, 2014. We'll see if that takes place. So what's going to happen is Judge Sherry Stevens will have everybody back in court July 18th, and we'll know more at that point. Speaking of the judge, let's listen to a little bit of what she had to say. Here are 2008-03-10021, State of Arizona versus Jody and Arias. This is the time set for status conference. Appearances for the record, please. Court of Appeals on behalf of the state. And Kurt Norman and Jennifer Wilmot on behalf of Ms. Arias. She is present in custody standing at the defense table. All right, the court has conferred with counsel and chambers with the defendant and victim representatives present. In light of information provided during that conference, the court is deferring ruling on the motion to continue resetting this matter to July 18th at 8.30 a.m., vacating the current trial date of July 18th. Is there anything else, counsel? No. Thank you. So you heard from Chase. We can tell you that the defense team has presented evidence such as a conflict of interest in the fact that they have vacations planned. They also have said that they needed more time to find people to speak on Jody Arias' behalf, and that's why they are looking for a continuous in this case. Now, we don't know exactly what was discussed behind those closed doors. That has been sealed, but we have heard those were some of the things that they were planning on presenting before the judge today. The judge is now going to make a decision on July the 18th as to whether or not she will allow for that continuous and that was the day that the actual jury selection was supposed to begin for the penalty phase on this case so it'll be really interesting to see what the judge will decide I can tell you that sources within Maricopa County have told me that the uh, judge as well as other county officials are not looking to delay this action any further they feel a lot of money has been spent already in this case and that it's time for it to be wrapped up got it did they did they speak at all talking about I I see why they're uh, the fact of the matter is that's why states grant defendants the right to get dressed up so that they're not prejudiced by the jail garb and the jail outfit. And that's why we do have defendants looking good. Same thing with the OJ case where he was in custody, but whenever you saw him during the trial, he was in his nice Italian silk suits. So, you know, I see why they, it's shocking for them because uh, they saw one aspect of Jody and now they're seeing another. Now let's talk about the timeline. To locate these witnesses and if there's further good reason to delay it, then the judge will delay it. But the judge is going to inquire and ask what they did, uh, how many investigators do they have looking for these witnesses, why aren't these witnesses there now. There's got to be sufficient reason for the delay. Otherwise, I don't think this judge is going to grant any more delays. Okay. John, thanks again. And, uh...